Hello and welcome to um, AutoCAD for Landscape Architects section 3. In this section we're going to uh, focus on basically just plotting and layout, um, creating your title block, scaling it um, from layout <coughs> space you know, to model space, um, making sure you have all the pertinent information in your title block and um, different ways of you know, just a methodology of creating um, title blocks and maybe saving them in a file um, so you can just pull from them any time. So you have to worry about creating it each and every time. And you're just modifying title block and scale and um, property description. Okay, so we're back to what the drawing that we that we made. This is the completed um, corner rows uh, plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on layout, <coughs> the layout tab here, and we're going to go file, page setup manager. I'm gonna click modify. Um, you guys are, I think, are gonna pick, or depending on what studio you're in, 202 or is it 225, the um, Carver plotter. So you pick whatever plotter you need. Um, now, if you pick like a, uh, I don't know, a desktop plotter, something that only has eight and a half or 11 by seven, 11 by 17 um, printing capability, then that's the only page size you'll be able to select. Um, just to keep that in mind. Um, so I'm gonna. I don't have since I don't have Carver here. I'm just gonna go to my PDF creator, and I'm gonna select. I don't know for this thing. We'll pick um, Arc D, which is 24 by 36. Okay. Select. Arc, I'm gonna select Arc D 24 by 36 for this. Um, this is where your pen settings come into play. <coughs> So your split your plot style table. Um, my LDI is already set, so I'm LDI 2007. And once again, you want to make sure that your colors are corresponding to the LDI um, chart. So that means um, click OK. I'll show you that real quick. Oops. Well, let me show you the pen settings to make sure you know what I'm talking about. These color ranges, the pen settings need to be these index colors, not these up here. It has to be this red, yellow, green, blue or cyan, blue, magenta, white, and so on and so forth. So make sure that those pen settings are coinciding or, or it's going to print in, um, in color, and you don't want that. Okay. Let me go back to the file page setup. I just did it. It's on portrait instead of landscape, and that's why it's looking like that. So we can fix that. So page setup manager, modify, and click on landscape this time. Okay, there we go. So there goes my page setup. So now I have the, the appropriate page size, and now I just need a title block. <coughs> Now, see where I have I have a viewport. Turn off my ortho. And basically, what the viewport does is, is it allows you to see into your model space. It's like a window. Okay. Um, now you can enter model space by I will du by by either double clicking in it or typing in ms enter for model space. And it'll allow you to um, actually modify your design. Now, um, you can lock your window. A display locked. Mine's locked right now. If my display locked was on no, and I double click in it, I can pan it around. So you need to be cognizant of this because if you if you've scaled your drawing already and you don't have your viewport locked, and you go in and you start scrolling in and out, you'll throw off the scale. Okay. And that'll make a little bit more sense when we actually scale this thing, but um, be cognizant of that. So typically when I have my thing where I want it to be, my model, and when I, once I have it scaled, I'll just go back and I'll lock my viewport. Okay. But let's bring in the title block. Um, now you can create a title block, and once again, I would just, you know, put it on a layer, create a title block layer, and uh, begin building it like that. I actually, I've actually made one already here. Um, and I just saved it. Um, so, and some things to be um, cognizant of in your title block, things that you need that you should have. Uh, obviously, the title of the project, the uh, the address, um, date drawn by, and a scale, uh, written scale, and also a um, a graphic scale. And we'll draw that together in a second. Um, the sheet number and what the sheet actually is. And I always included a, a vicinity map. That was always something that we had to include. And it's probably a good habit just to go ahead and start doing this now. <clears throat> It'll make life easier on, and your your mind will kind of be trained to do it. Um, also, 
when you print out CDs, you do things in, in sets. Uh, so you'll have a layout plan, planting plan, irrigation. Now, we didn't get this when I was in school until junior year, and it didn't really register. So we a lot of times we just combined everything into one sheet. But since you guys are using AutoCAD anyway, it's just a matter of turning on and off layers. So really, it's really simple to create your layout and then planting and if you you know actually if you get more a more advanced grading and irrigation and you're just simply turning layers on and off because all your work is going to be in model space anyway so you, you all should be printing sets I think earlier on than later and submitting that in your projects um, okay so I had this created and, and basically what I did was to make this um, I have my layers put on I just I picked a rectangle and I went um, D for dimensions and 36 by 24 Click and created my outline, and then went back in and picked the font and stuff. So all this stuff is basic things. That's the North Arrow font that you guys should hopefully have now. Um, for your vicinity map, I actually just made this one up, uh, pulled it out of my mind. But um, if you have a specific site, you can um, <coughs> Google it. Go to Google Maps and um, and find it, so you know what the road was looking like in the buildings. And you can do a Control Print screen and bring it into Photoshop if you have it or another program. And that is cropped it out, and you can actually just insert that. Um, vicinity maps are just good because it shows, it helps, you know, it's a vicinity map, it helps show people where, where your design is, and it's something that, um, that they required when I was working, so, and it makes sense to have. <clears throat> and you can just trace it, and you would insert it the same way you would insert, we inserted the other image using the IM in AutoCAD that we did the trace off of, and you can either just insert it and leave it alone, or just um, trace over it and have your CAD lines. But I would put vicinity maps up. Okay. So I'm going to take this in. Since it's already created, I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to go Control C, Control Tab back to this layout, and then I'm going to Control V. And all the layers that are associated with this are, are going to come over. And those are actually on layer zero. I should probably fix that, put it on title. But um, for this demonstration, that's fine. Now, I want to get this on top of that and make it sure it's, it's aligned perfectly. Um, so what I want to do is go back to File, Page Setup Manager. I'm going to Modify. And this time, I'm going to select what to plot, the plot area. I'm going to go Window. And I'm going to go around this guy, the one I brought in. And then I'm going to go Center Plot. Just click OK. And it'll bring everything in right there, as you can see. Now, one thing I didn't do, it uh, AutoCAD prints a... Um, a trim line, a border. So, in order to um, to fix that, I'm just going to offset my line. You see, my line's right on it, so it's actually cutting off that line, so it's not going to look like I want it to look. So, I'm going to go O, Enter, T, click on that line, and I'm just going to bring it down here. And there you go. I'm just going to trim that. Trim that. <clears throat> and this layer I have, I, I called it boundary. And um, I have it on a no plot layer. So I'm just going to match MA, enter, click that line, and click this outside line so it's also a no plot. You won't see it anyway, but I just want to make sure it's like that. Um, you notice your viewport's over here, so that we're just going to simply move it. Click move, M, enter, click on it, click again, and drag it over. Okay, so there goes our viewport. And I think this viewport's on a no plot layer. No plot means it just it'll 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 you'll see it print, but you won't print that line. So it's on a no plot layer. And this is another cool little tr uh, trick that you'll have when you use viewports. Um, and you can insert multiple viewports too. And I'll show you that in a second. But it always defaults to your basic. You can um, trim these viewports. So this time I'm gonna go here. I'm just gonna bring it up to the um, edges of my drawing where I want it to go. And I can't see it now, so I'm gonna build that layer manager draw in the draw order. So I'm gonna send this one to the back, so I can see my viewport line. Now I'm gonna click on it, <coughs> and I'm going to go viewport clip. Okay, it says select clipping object or uh, um, polyagonal. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave it polyagonal. I'm gonna click hit enter, and it says specify start point. So I'm gonna click around the viewport, and I'm actually gonna come over a little bit. I'm gonna turn my ortho on for this to make sure my lines. Are... Oops, hit up. Yeah, I'm gonna hit my ortho. Make sure my lines are straight. Okay, come over. Could go around. It doesn't really matter. Okay. 
Okay. And as you can see, my viewport is taking on the shape um, that I wanted it to create. So you can make that any shape you want. Okay, so now when I click in it, I can move it around and you see where it cuts off. So you can have note space. Um, typically, when you do real CDs, you'll have um, a section for notes and because there's always you're always gonna have notes on all your CDs. So I would um, either leave the bottom all the way off, just cut like a two inch section off the bottom and leave my print up here or on the side somewhere. Um, but now I have my viewport um, clipped. Now I can move my drawing around. Remember, it's not locked right now, so I can toggle it around. And now we're going to scale it. <clears throat> There's different ways of scaling. I told you all before in section two that you can um, change your units. I'll show you that again, units. And right now they're in decimal. If, if you were an architectural, um, then you would have to draw everything by, by typing in one foot, six inches, that six inches, and be very specific. If that was the case and you wanted to scale it, um, there is a toolbar here and it's called viewport if you don't have it open you just simply go click on that on a blank area and this one's viewports I know okay viewport and that pops up and then you'll have this little down up down box <coughs> and it'll allow you to um, select your scale if it's half inch or 3 16 7 inch whatever you want now these are only going to work if work correctly if you have drawn your drawing and with architectural units if you have used decimal it will not would not work. The way to get around that is just to do the conversion. Um, for instance, half inch scale, a half an inch equals one foot. Um, and using your one to ten or one to sixteen scales, you would just it would be one to two. Um, because if a half an inch equals one foot, then one inch it would essentially be two. So it's it would be one to two scales. So you would just do the do the math and do the conversion like that. For me, I'd rather do the math and do the conversion because, like I said before in the previous um, section, typing in that one foot dash three inches is just too much work. It's too much work. It's easier to work in decimals, so that's what I would recommend. Um, so let's do that. Now, this is one way to, to scale it right here, this side. You could also, oops, if that happens, just do zoom extents. See, enter, E, enter. You do a zoom extents and scroll back in. Um, the way I typically do it now, um, when I'm in my model space and it's live, I'll type Z, enter, and you'll see an uh, option for scaling. So S, enter, and we'll try to make this thing a half inch scale. So like I said, because I did mine in decimal, I'm going to go um, 1 slash 2, and you type in XP, enter. And it's going to be too big for my viewport space, but... Okay, let's try another one. Uh, okay, so this is going to be quarter inch scale, and that's what's going to work for me and my drawing for this for this particular page size, and that actually works really well because it gives me um, room to put notes in if I had to, and then also your labels. You always want to make sure there's room for labels. You don't want too much dead space because um, it'll look silly, but you want to have enough room that's going to allow you to. Um, to put labels in and do everything you need to do to describe what's going on in your drawing, so be cognizant of that. And like I said, for th for those of you who have um, drawn it and using your architectural units, then you would have simply just selected a uh, quarter inch scale here, and that would have worked. Okay, so now that I have my <coughs> excuse me my layout the way I want it to s the way I want to see it, I'm going to click on my viewport and now I lock it because I don't want to I don't want to mess that up. So now when I double click on it, I can make changes if I want to, but when I toggle in and out, it's not going to toggle my actual drawing in and out, so I won't, it maintains my scale for me. So that's why we lock it. Something else I neglected to mention, but it's here. Um, this is, I'm actually using, I'm borrowing one of my friend's logos, that were, well, something that we've been working on for a logo for his company. Um, when you have these drawings in your school, have fun with it. I mean, do, make, you know, take the time, sit down, draw yourself a little logo, scan it in, and use it every time. Um, get you know, create an aesthetic for yourself. Do something that's fun. And you make these drawings yours, because this stuff's gonna go in your portfolio, and you want it to look sharp. And that's not only your um, the craftsmanship of your design, but everything. I mean, everything is design, even the way you, you lay out your title your title block. So, um, be cognizant of that, and uh, take your time and make these things look good. This is my suggestion. Um, okay, so we have this thing, the viewport laid out. I'm trying to think what else to show you guys with this. Um, okay. Graphic scale, easy to make. I'm um, gonna click on the rectangle tool, 
and I'm on viewport right now. Uh, so the vicinity map. Let's put it on zero just to be consistent since that's on zero. I'm gonna click on that. <clears throat> I'm gonna go D enter for dimension. I'm gonna go point two five for the depth of it. And we'll make the first one um, a half an inch, so I'm gonna go 0.5. Okay, so I need to rotate that so next time I do it, do it the opposite way. So I just rotated it and hit R O enter and grab the angle I wanted to rotate it on and flipped it around. Had my ortho on. I'm gonna do it again. So this time D enter, this time I'm gonna go one, enter, 0.25. There you go. That's basically all you need right there. Now what I'm going to do is just simply draw a line here going up. And then I'm going to connect that thing. Copy that line again. And all you're doing is creating a graphic scale. It's easy stuff. <coughs> but important stuff. There. And then maybe one more. Maybe I'll just do one that's two inches this time. So I'll do dimension. 2.25 click okay copy this line over there you go now you have a graphic scale that simple and then, um, so basically, once you have these things drawn, your title block too. I mean, you can even include that in your, like I did here, in these drawings, and just have like a 24 by 36, 18 by 24, 11 by 17. You can just create all your title blocks ahead of time, so you know you have your format, and obviously the, the title will change. But um, you could just copy them over, then modify them as you bring them in. I mean, oops, in my, I mean, because all that's changeable. You can just double click on it and change the name and change the font. But that way you don't have to worry about, man, I got to create a title lock because it's already done. You can focus more time on your design work and um, figuring out layout. And then all this stuff can be modified once you have it. But it's a good idea to um, have your layout stuff done. Another thing I neglected to mention um, when I did this, I left a two inch border. We do that because when we staple sets, you want to leave some room for the fold because you'll put a binder over you'll staple the set off and you'll open it like a um, a booklet so you don't want your uh, an important piece of information to be under that staple line so I was just taught to make it about a two inch border or inch and a half um, to compensate for that fold line uh, for this graphic scale I want to hatch those things too so you hit H enter and I'm going to do a solid hatch There you go. And then in text, the first one's going to be zero. Oops, let me make that an aerial. I like aerial. So zero feet. Always put your feet, always describe your increment. Don't just assume people know. Sometimes you I don't do that and it's not right. So, um, And then, you know, you copy that and need to be and then you put in your correct so what is the scale I said quarter inch scale <coughs> I don't want to do auto stack So then basically you would just put your corresponding numbers in. And uh yeah. That's pretty much that. Um so that scale thing's pretty easy, but it's very important. Let me show you that, another thing. Let me show you, you can add actually additional um viewports. And if you wanted to take away the cut from it, your uh, polyagonal um trim, you would uh viewport clip again and delete. So delete. And it's back to the way it was. Uh, I want to pull this thing over just so I can show you guys. 
Um, go back to viewport. So I went to the layer here, then clicked on it to make it current. I'm gonna go. Um, is it view? Is it viewports? Yeah. Um, call a viewport one. Select the viewport. You can put another one in. Basically, gives you another viewport, <clears throat> and you can do an independent scale here. So, say you had drawn some sections, pulling off some sections off this, then you can do the same thing. It does supposed to be a half inch, a quarter inch, and you can change the scale in these as well and do it the same thing. So you can actually have multiple viewports open in your drawing. So that means you can do everything in model space. So when you do sections and stuff, you don't. There's no need to do sections in a different drawing set. Um, you can everything should be in your model space, and you can just you know pull your lines. You know from here to give you yourself your dimensions, and it's easier to draw that way to me anyway. And just some, scoot it up on top, and then um, you know use a separate viewport to zoom in on that on that particular um, piece of information. So you can insert insert multiple viewports. And that's pretty much all there is to layout. Um, it's pretty simplistic. Like I said, just follow those keys and make sure that um, you have your pen settings on and you plot and uh, your plot previews and, and play with these things. Make them look good. If you want to put a double line, you can make this title block look any way you want. You know, it doesn't have to be up here. You can draw it along the line. I was just taught uh, to put the um, title information on the, on the right hand side just because as you're looking through the set, you can flip the pages and find the sheet number easily as opposed to opening this whole thing up and reading, you know, it's just easier to look this way. So that's the way I was taught to draw it. Now I, I actually like the way it looks. But um, you can do anything, you can lay it out any way you want. Just make sure it's consistent through all your drawings. Okay, and that kind of concludes um, this section three, and that was just layout. Um, like I said, if any questions, um, email me. My email address is w dot chris c h r s dot harrison. Um, H A R R I S O N at gmail dot com. Um, ask Perry, ask uh, your peers, and ask Google. And um, hopefully, with all those resources, we should be able to figure these things out and answer the questions that you have. All right. Thanks for listening. Hope this was helpful.